It's California edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are continuing our road show today. We are in Ventura, California. What a beautiful city this is. We are joined by Fran Pavley. She is a member of the California State Senate, representing portions of Ventura County for Absolutely. sure, as LA County as well. Yeah. Yes, 40% uh, is Ventura County and 60% is LA okay, County. Okay, so you know well the challenges facing both LA, Ventura, and really all of California when it comes to our water and the drought. Could you sort of really give us a sense of how severe this crisis is? If it is severe, I I'm making a presumption. It is extremely severe. Okay. Third to fourth year of record drought. You look over the past centuries or so, we've seen ups and downs as we right. know in our weather pattern. We're seeing consistent now, not only less rain, but less snowpack. Mm -hmm. And that's the critical one if you're living in Southern California. And so uh, you're right, Ventura County is really affected right. by it because they have agricultural concerns plus what the rest of us share, and that's urban water concerns. So as you know, there was a measure on the ballot, Proposition 1. It was supported by Democrats and Republicans in Sacramento. And sure enough, the voters jumped on board. About two-thirds voted to pass Prop 1, a bond worth $7.545 billion. Give us a sense of why you believe the voters did the right thing in passing this bill. Well, they did absolutely the right thing. Mm -hmm. and now. Nothing will matter if we don't get any rain, right. but they did the right thing because we're going to be better prepared for the next drought. Investment, for example, in groundwater cleanup, mm -hmm. $800 million, right. uh, absolutely critical. Investment in more use of recycled water. Here's what I think is going to be the big change. Please. We're going to realize that we can't use water just once. We're going to have to use it two or three times. And how do we, you and me, do that? Because I do feel as if, why can't I, I don't know, collect my shower water mm -hmm. and use it again? It, it makes all the sense. You know what's frustrating to me is it takes a little while for my shower to get hot. Oh, and yeah. I see all that water go down the drain. I'm like, I just want to capture it and do something. Well, there's so many things we right. could be doing smarter. If you were building a new subdivision today, mm. you'd have a dual pipe system, right? One for landscaping and one I for see. clean potable water and maybe use your potable water once for cooking and right. personal needs. And then it could be retrieved and used for landscaping purposes. Does it need to be cleaned when it does that or not necessarily? Uh, it depends upon what you use it for. Okay. But for many regards, you can use it once or twice or three times. and so. Right. We need to do that. For example, what I'm excited about in the water bond, for the very first time, we're looking at stormwater as an asset, not a problem. So when it rains, the water just won't just run off our streets and curbs and into the ocean. We're actually going to capture it, reuse it, either for environmental issues or recharging aquifers right. or for landscaping on schools and parks. If we're not using recycled water, for all our landscaping purposes, whether it's homes mm -hmm. or schools or street medians, we have problems here. What else can we do? Because it's clear to me that California is coming together. When you look at the statistics, we see that our water usage truly is down, even in Southern California, mm -hmm. seven, eight, nine percent year to date. Uh, but like you said, the bond is good, but it doesn't help us at this moment. We need help right, right now. Right, and, and the thing we can do right now is on the conservation side, okay. absolutely, while we invest in the uh, infrastructure. So recycled water, um, giving money to local governments and water agencies for what we call purple pipe, reusing okay. water treated by the treatment plant, instead of putting it into the ocean, right. which we do now, right. um, will be used for landscaping purposes or industrial purposes. We there, can do that really quite quickly. Really, but is there anything you and I can do. I mean, I, I don't mean to sound parochial or patrician, but I just feel like we are at a point in time where we do want to help. We, the collective, want to help. I mean, more than you want to know, I don't flush my toilet, you know, after Too I go number one. Too much information. But a That's lot of people are doing yes. that. I mean, yeah. you just kind of, you know, if it, you've heard the, the mellow, yellow, I mean, yes. you're from the 70s. That's right. But I do think that's something, you know, we got to talk about it. Well, here's something to think about that yeah. Orange County's doing a good okay. job and Irvine's doing a Please. good job. They're taking treated wastewater. Okay, that's for real. All right. right, not just on your plants, but cleaning it to such an extent that it can pass all public health standards tests and be reused for drinking water. Wow. 
That's, that's what. Wastewater. Now they have the right. uh, geologic makeup and the ability to do right. just that. Amazing. But we can duplicate that uh, when the geology permits. Right. Agriculture has to be part of this discussion. Are 75 they? to 80 percent of all the water we use in the state is agri for agricultural uses. So yes, we all have mm -hmm. our fair share. I think our biggest use of water for most suburban people is on landscaping. Right. Do we really need those, all those lawns? What's remarkable about that statement is I think there is a shift on that view. I mean, you live in Agora Hills, you know California. We don't have a front yard lawn anymore. As chair of the water committee, but no you, front lawn. You're not alone. You know, yeah. Calabasas, Agora Hills, Thousand mm -hmm. Oaks, this is, you know, it's ground central for mm -hmm. beautiful green mm -hmm. lawns. Mm -hmm. But if you start driving around these well-heeled communities, you are seeing drought tolerant plants, you're seeing synthetic turf. I mean, there is, or, or, or am I off? I mean, I do feel no, like there is a shift. No, people are, are smarter. They understand right. Water is a finite resource, and we should be reusing mm -hmm. it over and over again. Right. Um, but here's what I'm really excited about. As you know, I work a lot about on climate change I do. issues. I do. You might not know that 20% of all the energy we use in our state is moving and treating and heating water. Now that really is amazing connection. So we should be conservative water for many reasons. One, if we have less rain and less snowpack. We've got to be smarter in the limited water we have. We need agricultural users. We may have to assist them to not only manage that surface water, but groundwater. And let's talk about groundwater because we know your friends in the Central Valley are tapping groundwater much out of desperation. And what are we saying? What's called subsidence. Anthony mm -hmm. Canella, your mm -hmm. colleague, taught yes. me all about subsidence. I, yes. And how literally you can see the ground fall on itself, and that, then it's over. I mean, if you have subsidence, you can't recharge. Mm -hmm. And so legislation was passed um, that deals with the regulation of groundwater, first time in California history. What's the buzz on it? I know there's some nerves about it. Oh, there are some nerves. Right. In fact, I'm having a hearing. Okay. Talking about oh, well, multiple hearings sure. last year and continue to have them. Implementation will be mm -hmm. the challenge. We're the only Western state right. that does not have a groundwater Even management Texas. policy. Even Texas. Even Texas. <laughs> right. And I read their regulations, and they really do have, um, and they manage it. And normally, groundwater is 30% of our state's water supply. But in drought years, 50 to 60 percent. Right. And, that, and, we're in and that. we are overdrafting, mm -hmm. not just the Central Valley, but I think one of the biggest challenges is the whole Central Coast. They are not tied into the State Water Project or the snowpack. And I've learned what happens with them is not subsidence, but seawater intrusion. Right. And once you have seawater intrusion, the basin is in real trouble. For not only urban uses, but mm -hmm. if you want to destroy your agricultural economy, <laughs> in Ventura County and Santa Barbara. Right. These people, are, uh, these counties are on the front line of that problem and see that sense of urgency. So all the legislators from right. the Central Coast, uh, because of the groundwater and the saltwater intrusion and implications right. to their tourist industry and their right. agricultural industry, uh, vineyards and everything else, critically important. Under your legislation, the localities get a first crack yes. at regulating. If they don't, the state will jump in. Are the localities stepping up to the plate? Uh, they will be if they haven't been. Many are. Mm -hmm. They have two years to form their own local agency, mm -hmm. right? Make a, sure. We want them to take right. over this. We want the locals <laughs> to manage. Trust me, we want the I locals to manage this. Mm -hmm. And only if and when they won't or can't, right. first of all, the state would step in with assistance and help, right. technical support and everything. After they form their agency, they have five years to adopt the plan, and then they have quite a few more years to have what we call a sustainable groundwater You'll basin. You'll come back? Absolutely. Her name is Fran Pavley, member of the California State Senate. I'm Brad Pomerantz. It's California Edition.